go ahead and take a look at the next um, set of objects that are in, uh, relatively new for Grasshopper version 9, and that's the um, ones that have to do with working with meshes. So uh, there's a couple that we'd like to call out that are uh, really uh, useful um, right off the bat. Mesh edges, as well as um, the closest point and mesh evaluate, and these are under the analysis tab of the, the mesh tab. And they're really great for working with meshes, analyzing them for their parts, or even working with them in a way that you might work with them, uh, work with a surface, a NURB surface. So you can extract information from the mesh using the evaluate. And that includes points, normals, and colors. And then let's dive into um, working with uh, mesh colors, uh, different ways to color your meshes. And that has to do with uh, two schemes, one that uh, defines the colors based on the vertex uh, of each of the mesh, and another that has to do with um, a kind of spray paint option where you define locations and um, you color the mesh based on proximity to those point locations. All right, so let's go ahead and make a new uh, grasshopper definition. And the first thing we want to do is we want to just take a look at how we might work with a mesh in uh, grasshopper and extract some information from it using those analysis tools. So if we uh, drop in uh, mesh primitive, which is the mesh sphere EX, that creates a mesh sphere from square patch patches. Let's go ahead and drop that in. You'll see that we get uh, some geometry right off the bat in, um, in Rhino that's previewed. And uh, you may or may not see the uh, wires for the mesh. Uh, you may, it may look more like this, uh, kind of a rendered view. So you can do Control M in Grasshopper, or that's also under Display Preview Mesh Edges. So you can actually see the edges of the mesh. I'm going to perspective so maybe we can see that a little bit better. All right. Now, um, also in the Mesh Utilities uh, tab, there's some new functionality that relates to uh, rationalizing your meshes so you can weld them across creases. So let's go ahead and do that and weld our mesh together across its edges. This will give us one coherent mesh. Um, notice that this object gives us a mesh with 216 vertices to begin with and afterwards 152. So we had some overlapping vertices that we could um, merge together and weld so that we get one clean mesh. Next thing we're going to do is let's um, place f a few points into the Rhino environment. So I'm going to create multiple points here, choose some locations in space, and maybe uh, slide a couple of them up a little bit higher. So now we have four points in Rhino. All right. What we want to do is we want to find the closest point on the mesh to each one of these points in the uh, 3D environment, X, Y, Z coordinate locations. So let's go ahead and take a look at those objects we were mentioning, the mesh closest point, which asks for the points and the corresponding mesh to look at. So let's go ahead and drop in our, sorry, our welded mesh. And let's bring our points into a point parameter. All right, so we've got those there. A little side note on the display options, you can change your point flavor to dot, point, or cross as how that grasshopper point is being previewed in Rhino. All right, so if we drop our points into the mesh closest point, we can see here that it's finding the closest point on the mesh. Sometimes that's um, near an edge or a vertex, but a lot of times it's actually on a face, right? So um, what's, what we're able to do here is find the actual point in, with its X, Y, Z coordinates, which face index it's found on, as well as the mesh parameter. And the mesh parameter is um, going to tell us which face it is and where along that face as a kind of ratio we are relative to the, in this case, four vertices. So if we move across a face, a percentage based on these values, we'd be able to find that point. 
base 108, long 0%, 0%, 14%, and 0.85%. All right, what that allows us to do is also evaluate that mesh. So if you're doing this as, as a surface, you would have to use your UV coordinates. This is essentially the parallel bit of data for meshes. So we can go ahead and evaluate our mesh, uh, which asks for the mesh and then the parameter that we just found. Let's slide this over here. So that gives us now, again, the point in 3D space, but also the normal and the color. My mesh doesn't have any color attached to it, but we can preview the normal vectors from each one of these locations. So let's go ahead and do that under vector point, sorry, vector, vector, vector display. And this allows us to apply an anchor to a vector. You can see those guys there, and let's make them a little bit bigger. I'm going to just give it an expression that's supposed to be V times 5. All right, so now it shows us dynamically, if we move our points around, the closest point on the mesh, which is anywhere along the mesh, not just at a vertex or an edge, which was how you might have had to kind of hack it together before this object existed, um, as well as you can get additional information from that mesh. Uh, as you're evaluating uh, that particular mesh parameter. All right, so that's fun and um, really useful when you're trying to do some more significant analysis on something that's probably more complex than a simple sphere. Um, but let's then go ahead and take a look at what that might mean if we start to work with some mesh colors. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do a new definition. And I'll bounce back, and I just want to keep this part so we don't have to redo it. We'll have our welded mesh. All right. And instead of looking at how we might evaluate it for uh, kind of analysis information, vectors and points and mesh parameters, let's take a look at how we can preview this mesh in different ways inside of um, Grasshopper version 9. So for starters, what I want to do is take a look at the, um, under mesh primitive, the mesh colors object. This allows me to specify a mesh, that corresponding pattern of colors, and it will then preview by assigning a color at each one of these vertic vertices in this pattern um, to the mesh and then give me the preview of that, of the resulting mesh. So you can see that it's um, looping through a pattern of chartreuse, dark green, forest green, etc and it's assigning that to the vertex uh, element, and then uh, we're getting a kind of blended uh, version, right? So if I wanted to specify my own set of colors, we might drop in some color swatches. Choose a couple of interesting colors here that you like. All right, let's bring those together with a merge object which is another one of those dynamic elements that we can increase the number of parameters on input by zooming in and then apply that to the mesh. All right, so you can see that the mesh is created in a particular way. It's not random so that the uh, corresponding pattern is just um, looping through the vertices and being assigned, right? Uh, and that's interesting and we can go back in here and change the uh, number of faces along each edge with a slider. get a finer resolution to our mesh. And you know, as we change this number, the pattern is being adjusted on how it's being applied to the mesh. And that's interesting, but we don't actually have much control or we're not too, um, it's not too clear to us what the pattern is if we start to change these things. So another way you might wanna change that uh, set of uh, color assignments is not by a repeating pattern, but by proximity to a set of points. So let's use those same four points that we had here uh, from our last uh, exercise and use those as a way to assign the mesh spray object inputs. So if we go back to mesh, primitive mesh spray, this assigns colors to a mesh based on spray points. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and, and take a look at what this asks for. That's the base mesh, the spray points, and the colors of the spray points. So I've got three 
three, four points in three colors, so I'm going to make another color here. Maybe something um, down here in the magenta range. All right, so now I have uh, four points to go with my four colors. Let's bring our points into Grasshopper. One, two, three, four. All right, so now we can say, let's use our welded mesh, these spray points, and these colors. All right. And if I zoom in here, so I might want to turn my mesh edges off so I can see it. We can see it's blending between them, kind of like an airbrush. <clears throat> and that also has to do with what the specification is here for how it's being blended. This is a square setting. You can also do nearest. or root or furthest just just for matching rules for how you want your colors to be assigned all right so um, obviously our cyan isn't being used I pull it a little bit closer so now we have um, on our mesh assignments based on proximity all right and we can try and blend them with these options <clears throat> or we can also blend them with some additional functionality that's down here in the mesh utility tab which is to blur a mesh. So if we have a kind of coarse representation of those colors, we can blur the mesh, specifying a certain number of iterations. So as we assign the number of iterations for the uh, blurring, we can see that the colors are being blended across their edge as we blur the mesh more or less.